I am just getting prepared for my first session with Stephanie from Homeschooly. I got my whole rig set up here. I have the iPhone up there for the Zoom call, the GoPro right there with a nice microphone to record the session. And it should be recorded on the Zoom app as well. This is the setup that I'm going to be using for this series of videos. I feel like this is a comfortable place on my bed in the bread truck. It should be good. I think it looks good on camera and all of those things. I would like to have this window open because it's cool outside and I get some breeze blowing through but it just doesn't look good. Let me put this away and we'll see. See yeah it's a little bit bright outside that window. That's kind of a problem for me. Anyways, I'll get some better stuff set up soon. I'd like to keep the sessions. I, I was thinking if we do these weekly, let's do 15 minute sessions. It, it'll just be easier that way. And then we can get really specific, getting really narrow, really specific, keeping it really focused, diving in deeply in one aspect. Session one. I'm Paul Barger and I am on YouTube as the bread trucker. We are in my bread truck right now and my channel has been about van life for a number of years, but I'm starting, I'm starting to transition into a new realm and work on a lot of healing for myself. So that's what this series of videos is all about. And I'm Stephanie Matthews with homeschooly.life and I do healing work with individuals. So. Um, I do things, I incorporate primitive skills such as plant medicines, shamanic and energy work with modern day psychological aspects such as hypnosis, neuro-linguistic programming, and I blend the two. And Paul has so graciously um, stepped up to be a part of this process and be willing to share it with the world as he so generously does with so much of his life. So... I want us to get aware of, so this session one is going to be really about creating awareness of your body and we're going to do some very introductory inner child work. We're going to meet an inner child that is prior to the age of seven and we're going to find out a core need which uh, we've talked a little bit about Paul and I as to what those core needs or conditioning kind of create repetitive behaviors. So our goal for this session is to first create awareness of our body. At this point in the session, I lost internet connection and I had to restart. The rest of the session will be what I recorded on my GoPro that I had as a backup. I apologize for the audio being a little bit compromised. I think it still works. This practice you can follow along at home and do this on your own. If you feel called to this, Give it a try at home by following this video and doing it on your own. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have you rub your hands together. This is just a really uh, simple, physical way to kind of just start feeling uh, our bodies, our emotions, uh, where we begin, where our energy literally begins and where um, our emotions start. So there's, just rub them together as fast as you can and start feeling that fire. Do you feel that kind of pulsing in your hands? Mm-hmm. Okay. I got so goosebumps. This, I love it. <laughs> so this is what we're going to kind of play with. We're going to create this awareness because when we're doing inner child work especially, we have to feel safe. And a lot of times the reason we have trauma to begin with is because we didn't feel safe. And so creating an energetic field of safety can prove to be very vital for the success of this work to be able to, to change that. So what we're going to do is, do you still feel it? Do you still feel that mm -hmm. energy in between your hands? Okay, we're going to grow it. We're going to make it grow a little bit bigger. Okay. So kind of pulls it. It might almost feel like taffy. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we're gonna go a little bit bigger. When you feel that pull, just with your intention, with your with your mind, with your thoughts, we're just making this space a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this space completely surround our body. So you can start kind of pushing it out above you now mm -hmm. and behind you. Now take a breath. You're in this little cocoon now. And in this safe, cocoon-like space is where you can come now, anytime. You know that this is a space, it's, it's simple. You can rub your hands together, create that energy, wrap that energy around you. And literally, it creates a bubble from the influence of the outside world. They cannot get in right now. So now I'm going to have you close your eyes. And I'm going to have you take your hands and place them on your belly, however is comfortable. And I want you to breathe three deep breaths into your belly. One inhale. Hold for just a moment and exhale. Inhale. Hold and exhale. Inhale. Hold and exhale. Place your hands comfortably in your lap. And I want you to begin seeing in your mind's eye or your imagination the most safe and comfortable nature setting that you can visualize for you right now. Where is that nature setting? The first thing that came to mind was like a... Uh side of a mountain where there's like a cave and a like wolf's a wolf's den in there are the wolves inside of that den no okay is there anything that feels unsafe about going into that cave no okay perfect so you are on the side of a mountain, and there is a cave before you. I want you, just as we did a moment before, to, in your mind's eye, take that same energy that was created in your hands and put it up into the front of that cave opening. And you're going to take and create the energetic space of complete safety. And when you're ready, step into that cave. Okay. Now, there may be some light from outside, but as you get deeper into the cave, it is going to become darker. As you walk through this cave, I'd like for you to see some sort of uh, device to make light. It can be a candle, it can be a torch, it can be a, a flashlight. Uh, what is your device to create light in the cave? A candle. So I want you to take this candle and you are going to be searching this cave for a little Paul. I believe you said Polly was what you were called when you were little, right? Mm -hmm. So little Polly is hiding in this cave. He's been here quite a long time. He may be scared when you find him because he's been in the dark. So know that it's okay, in whatever state you find little Polly, know that you are finding him at the perfect moment and in the perfect time, and it is not too late, and it is not too early. So begin walking through this cave with your candlelight 
as your guide and begin looking around and share verbally when you see a version younger than yourself. Okay. How old is he? Um, five or six. Okay. I would like for you to ask Polly, what what does he need right now? I'm just not getting any answer. I'd like for you to grab his hand if he's willing and take him back out to the mouth of the cave. And when you can get to the mouth of the cave where you have the actual natural light again, let me know. Okay. Now I'd like for you to sit down cross-legged, crisscross applesauce or Indian style, whatever it was called when you were little, and face each other. And I want you to ask Polly, and if he needs to send you a image in your mind of what he needs, he can do that too. It doesn't have to be words. So I'm going to ask him again, what does Polly need? just said love. How would he like to, how would he like to um, experience that love? What does love look like to him? Does it, does it look like a hug? Does it feel like um, being listened to? Does it feel like not being judged or um, made to feel bad about who he is? It's um, being like being seen and being heard. Yeah. So I want you, as you are in as you are right now in this moment, to really look at him, really look at him. See how absolutely amazing Holly is. See the light that shines in his eyes. See his brilliance. See how creative and incredible he is. Really look at him and the overwhelming amount of love that you have for that little version of yourself. And now I'd like for you to tell him, I love you. Does he feel um, a bit, does he feel whole to you, or does he feel like he's a bit broken or traumatized already? He feels a little unwhole. Okay. So, would you let him know that you guys are gonna heal and become whole together? <sighs> that he's not gonna have to do He's not sitting in the darkness alone anymore. That he's not doing this by himself anymore. Well, 
he just ran over and hugged me, so... <laughs> So when you're ready, I'm going to have you hold his hands and literally pull him into your heart space. So I want you to imagine that you are holding his hands and pulling his entire being, that entire scene, the cave, the mountainside, six-year-old Polly, bring them all into your heart where you are going to hold him very closely. feel complete with that and you're ready you can open your eyes and flutter your eyes and come back to this moment very well done emotion that came up something that is familiar yeah and can you see that that six year old Holly's need for love has expressed itself in different circumstances in your life mm -hmm. yeah So, I'm going to make you sit with that emotion and that awareness of that seeking out that love until our next session. You've been dealing with this feeling for 40 years now. You can hold on to it for another week. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm going to have you do is really feel it. It started to come up, but oftentimes what I suggest is either going and putting your back up to a tree, sitting outside. Um, if you have access to water, putting your feet in water or a shower, anything like that. Having, uh, being in nature or in water to allow for those emotions to, to move through you and released. Because this is not a new emotion. This is a stagnant emotion. Mm-hmm. So, um, we had mentioned earlier the plant medicine, and I have plant medicine that will move those emotions for you, but I want you to do this work this week with whatever you can do on your own before introducing any plant medicine to move the rest of those emotions through. Okay. I'm in a perfect setting. I, I have... I'm surrounded by trees and a mountainside, and there's a creek at the bottom of the property. It's amazing, so I'm in a good spot. You're in a perfect spot. You're in you're in the most perfect spot to do this work. You don't have to worry about moving on. You don't have to worry about traveling tomorrow. Or you're safe. You're in a space where you can you can be settled for a moment and and be rooted and grounded in this work. Was, was there anything that came up or that happened that was unexpected for you? Um, 
No, well, when you asked me to just look at my younger self and see just how beautiful he is, and uh, some things came to mind that, like, you know how dreams kind of just get crushed and you forget about them? Like, a few things kind of came to mind about that. And so I'd love for you to, since videos are what you do, I'd love for you to do maybe a video sharing about some of those, um, sharing some of those memories that are coming up to go alongside with this. So, because there is going to be quite a bit of processing over the week in between our sessions. There's going to be things that come up that um, are going to feel maybe, um, they're going to be connected. And that way we can go through and reconnect as many of those missing and lost parts of you as possible and really create that wholeness again. Okay. Yeah. Well done. I didn't feel like I did much. <laughs> so. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes creating that awareness, finding that. So the first little child that we find is the gateway child. They are the keeper. They will come to you because they're brave enough, they're strong enough, they're tough enough, and they protect all the other children. So this gatekeeper child is very important to create a deep, meaningful bond with. So... It's okay. So, as you are... Um, so the fact that that little Polly came up and ran and hugged you is a vital piece to this work. Having that very strong connection and bond again. That is intimacy at its finest. So that is, um, that's a huge piece. The crack, the crack in your foundation, that, that, that brokenness or the trauma, however you want to define it, um, that right there is a healing is, is a healing that has happened so we will move uh, faster but I want to make sure that these first few sessions at least we dive we take the time because Polly's been waiting a long time to build and connect with you and so if we were to, to skip over this and go immediately to meeting your higher self and, and just move on, it would almost create another trauma. Mm -hmm. And so spend some time, Polly. Ask him what he wants to do this week. See if he wants to go play in the creek and go look for tadpoles or see if he wants to go climb a tree. Whatever Polly loved to do at six. I'd love for you to incorporate a few of those things into your into your week this week. So that's kind of your homework this week. All right. Yeah. All right. I've never been very good at homework, but I'll do it. <laughs> just that you know I'm totally new to all this so like the whole process like I have no idea about so um I have I've definitely 
seen the same version of Little Polly before. I had this uh, meditation, I did this meditation one time that just, um, I had this, you know, I was trying to just calm the chatter, focus on my breath and calm the chatter of my mind just to calm it down. And I visualized the same version of Polly running around and doing stuff that was, he was being mischievous, you know? And it got to the point where I tried to calm him quietly and softly and that didn't work and I got to the point where I lost my temper with him and like yelled at him and at some point he stopped and I could just see him like curled up in this in this corner of the room sleeping and I could I had like a quiet mind for a few minutes and then I you know, he, uh, thoughts started to come back, and I started to see him, like, up again, being mischievous, you know, and it was just very, uh, representative of my mind, what it's going through, so, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's so perfect, because what a different experience you had this time, intentionally seeking him out, intentionally focusing on his needs versus your needs. Mm -hmm. So your needs will come, but you have to focus on the sabotager, which is Polly. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's the one who's creating all the ruckus, all the, <laughs> yeah. all the mischievousness, all of the doubt, all of that. So as you begin to fulfill those needs so much will fall into place yeah cool yeah. <laughs> I love that thank you for sharing that because I think that is a powerful example of um, we often try to control the same conditioning that we got yelling, anger, you know guilt, anything, you know, the way we were raised, we often try to treat our inner child or our subconscious or um, our inner child like that, and they don't react to it. Mm -hmm. That's what they're used to. Right. So when them their needs met, they go, who is this? What? Oh, this is different. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can play. What, what, what are we doing here? And it, and it pulls them in versus pushing. So often we push away exactly what we desire. Yeah. And through this process, we're going to learn how to pull in and learn how to receive and give to our needs versus try to push them away. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to see uh, what more comes up this week. I'm excited to see what else is revealed this week. And I'm really excited to hear what kind of um, breakthroughs or emotions or anything. It's going to it's, it's gonna be, um, hopefully it's going to be pretty effortless this week to allow for those things to come up. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Well, we'll see you next week then. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah.